is the bicycle example problem from Monday, November 5th, lecture number 22. The first part of this example says that we have a bicycle moving from right to left, and we're going to assume that it's moving at a constant velocity v. And the first part of this question says that assuming, let's say, out on this tire we have some point A. On this tire, right across from that, we have some point B. And it asks, what are the velocities of the tires at point A and B? Well, first thing we need to know is this is rotational motion. And so our tires have some radius r. And we know that if I'm, say, I don't know, a bug or something attached to this tire wheel, and I'm actually at point A, and if I was following along this tire, if we're assuming that the tire is not slipping and we have continual constant motion, then the tire rotates in this direction while the back tire rotates in this direction. And that means that my velocity, if I was at point A, would be directly up in the positive Y direction, and we could call this VA. And if I was on tire B, the back tire, and I was at point B, I was that same bug going around, then I would appear to have a velocity down in the negative y direction, vb, and we could say actually that va is equal to vb only because this velocity, or what we call a tangential velocity at this point, if we're, since we're traveling in a circle, that velocity is going to be equal to our angular velocity times the radius of our tire. If we assume that tire A and tire B are exactly the same size, maybe this picture didn't denote that, but let's assume they're exactly the same size, then our linear velocities at the outer rims of the tire would be exactly the same. However, they'd be in the opposite direction, so we'll call VB negative, since it's in the negative Y direction. The other part of this says, what are the horizontal components at point C and D? So if we call this point C and this point D, I'm going to change colors here so we can see this better. Point C and D are exactly where the tires make contact with the ground. When the tires make contact with the ground, we're going to assume zero slippage. So at this point, um, there's no kinetic friction. It's all static friction. And since when I ride a bike, I push on the pedal, which then pushes on the chain, which then causes the back tire to rotate, I'm going to say that the back tire applies a horizontal force, we'll call it a contact force, from the tire on the ground. Well, if that's the case, then I also know that there's going to be a reaction force from the, from the ground on the tire, and that's actually our frictional force because these two objects are in contact. So it's our frictional force of ground on the tire, and it's in that direction. Now, I'm not applying a force to the ground by the front tire. In fact, the front tire is just able to spin, and it's only spinning because it's in contact with the ground. And as the rest of the bike moves forward, then the ground grabs the tire, pulling it backwards, causing it to spin. So what that means is I have a small frictional force in this direction, which is going to be the ground on the front tire.